Middle Mississippi less than one percent consumers had electricity. Unless you were in an urban area, you didn't have it. My grandparents uh, lived out in the rural parts of Covington County, and they did not have any power, even though we did in town. I remember uh, just all of the conveniences, an unbelievable thing, and how exciting the families were all over South Mississippi, for that matter of fact. The goal of the Rural Electrification Act was to bring electricity to rural America, but th the purpose of doing that was to improve the quality of life for those that live in rural America and improve those communities, and that's what it's done. Cooperatives existed, but they didn't have any generation. They were buying their wholesale power from other sources. So the co-ops of the state of Mississippi formed what was called the South Mississippi Electric. And we are the generation and transmission arm of the co-ops in the state of Mississippi. We have 11 co-op members that buy wholesale energy from us. We transmit it through our lines to our 11 co-op members, who then turn around and sell it to consumers like us in these rural areas. I'm a member and so I'm an owner and so I have a vested interest in leadership and how the company runs and I'm able to elect the board members that represent me and I'm able to have a say and a voice. Being a member, when I'm out there in the field, every decision I make I know is going to affect my power bill and so when I'm out there dealing with my landowners, in the back of my mind there's always this little voice saying, hey, you know, make sure you're protecting the people that, that you're serving. We, we do whatever it takes to, to keep the power on. The culture of working in an electric cooperative comes from the mission of the electric cooperative and why we were created to begin with. We, we're sort of like a big family, you know, everybody gets along. You're working to improve the qualities of life of your neighbors, your own family, and your friends. Our typical employees, I like to say a lot of them are the good old guys that you can depend on. They're the good salt of the earth people who, if you need help, they're going to help you. They're going to be there. They're going to work as hard as they can to get the job done. They're the people that you want on your side. We're the ones who leave home in the dark to keep the lights on. Look at it like we're firemen. Whatever the problem may be, we handle it. I started out 21 years ago and uh, I've always taken pride and so with my co-workers and, and the job that we do. Our control room, they're 24-7. There's always someone watching the monitors, watching what's going on. To keep the power on, it's a 24-hour a day job. When a storm hits, you'll see trucks almost immediately. We're, we're in there because these are, these are our neighbors, these are our friends, our family. Power 12, it's 11 co-op members plus one, which is us, we're the one. The power industry has changed a lot over the years. There's a lot more regulatory and environmental issues that we have to deal with now. Along with 11 co-ops and ourselves, it just gives us a louder voice, a bigger voice, a bigger footprint. We together serve 55 of the 82 counties in Mississippi, all the way from the Delta through the Gulf Coast. Coming together, we have a bigger voice to be able to make um, an impact. Well, our energy portfolio right now consists of hydro, which is water, some nuclear. We have coal generation, we have natural gas. And then solar. It's, it's not good for a utility to depend on any one particular source of fuel. Maintaining that diversity has always been important, in our opinion, to help keep electricity as affordable as possible. We want it to be available when our members need it, but we also want it to be affordable so they don't have to choose between food or electricity or medications. Whether we have children, grandchildren, or, or great-grandchildren, we have to look out for their best interests and preserve, whether it be streams or the air quality or, or whatever it is, that we need to consider that. I have children. And I want them to be able to enjoy the very things that I enjoyed was growing up as a child. From a business standpoint, we're constantly looking at new techniques 
from our construction, from our maintenance, from generation. We're looking at new and better ways to do things to ensure that we're uh, being as environmentally friendly as we possibly can be. These are rural areas that are quickly becoming non-rural areas. They are growing, they are um, expanding with businesses. We're helping with our economic development to make those businesses come to our areas and provide better jobs and just ultimately a better quality of life for our members. I think the future's bright. You know, we, we all need to be able to flip the switch and our light come on and, and it's, a, it's a need that will always be there. The growth is phenomenal and I give a lot of credit to the industry, especially to the rural electric companies in the state of Mississippi. The economic development that's occurring in rural Mississippi is extremely exciting and we are positioned now to help serve any new electric load, to help bring those new businesses into town as quickly as possible and bring those new jobs into Mississippi. And that keeps alive the whole point of the Rural Electrification Act in the first place, which is to improve the rural communities that, that we serve. That's the power of 12. That's the power of 12. That's the power of 12. That's the power of 12.